I'm Robin. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a whole ton of spooky book recommendations that are perfect for October. I have 13, I think it's 13 books that I want to talk about and I kind of broke these up into categories. So I have a couple of YA books. I have a couple of like speculative books. I have a couple that are paranormal and then some creepy horror thriller books. So I am not, I am not the biggest like horror reader by any means. I am scared very, very easily. So these are kind of my version of spooky books. If you are a like thriller horror fan, this is, this is not going to be the list for you. I'm, I'm not that reader. I'm not very good at, at reading a bunch of scary things. I will sleep with the lights on. So if you are looking for some spooky books that aren't like, too scary, <laughs> this is your video. I'm gonna start with the YA books and then go from there. So starting off is The Girl from the Well by Rin Shapeko. This is, I believe, the start of a trilogy, but I only read this first book and this first book does wrap up this story completely. So if you wanna read this one as a standalone, you can totally do that. This follows a ghost girl. You know that she has been around for a very long time and she goes around and she kills bad men. She specifically seeks out men who prey on children and she murders them. And I love the idea of a vengeful ghost. I believe the author called this the ring meets the grudge and that that's super accurate. This has a lot of really creepy elements in it. I will say straight up, this book scared the crap out of me. <laughs> the like ghosty haunting elements are terrifying. This is the girl from the ring straight up. She finds herself being drawn toward this boy who is covered in tattoos and she isn't sure why she is drawn to this boy, why she keeps like seeking him out, why she keeps running into him. However, she does discover that there is a man who is trying to abduct this boy and I think his sister. And so their paths kind of get intertwined. And as their paths intertwine, you start learning a lot of secrets about this boy and why she is so drawn to him. There are not only killer ghosts in here, but there are also terrifying dolls. So if you're scared of dolls, either don't pick this one or this is a really good one for Halloween season. I really liked this. This is, I believe, the only Rin Shibeko book that I have read, but I, I really liked this. And like I said, I think there are more books in this, but this story completely wraps up. And then I believe the next book is like following the same characters, but it's kind of like a newer, a new story. So the next one I have is The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. This is kind of the YA version of a 90s slasher movie and it is so much fun. You are following this girl who right at the beginning of the book ends up experiencing a break-in at her house. She starts watching horror movies and slasher movies as a way for her to cope by making, like exposing herself to all of these scary things. It helps her process her feelings about this break-in and what happened to her and her trauma. And um, she kind of becomes obsessed with horror movies. And she starts at this new school, and while she is there, she discovers this secret club known as the Mary Shelley Club, and it is this group of seemingly, like, mismatched kids who are all obsessed with horror, and not only are they obsessed with horror, but their club also plays pranks on the students in the school that they want to get revenge on, and she joins this club, and she is tasked with playing a prank on somebody, and the pranks start to go bad. And this book is chunky, but it is a super fast read. There are so many like clips and stuff of like famous horror and thriller movies and slasher movies. And this is just, it's such a fun read. Next up for YA is To Break a Covenant by Allison Ames. This one, Encounter to This Kind of Chunkier Beast, is really short. This one's only like 300 pages. And this one is also paranormal. You're following this group of girls who befriend the new girl to town and the new girl's father is trying to investigate the supposedly haunted mines and see if the mines are safe. But when these girls, as well as the father, go down into the mines, none of them quite come back the same. And these four girls are trying to figure out how to escape the clutches of the mines. 
And along the way, they're uncovering all of these like ghosts and creepy elements and really, really weird stuff starts to happen. And there's an amazing friendship group in here. There are terrifying moments in these mines. If you are claustrophobic or scared of mines or any of that, again, if you love being scared, pick this one up because the moments in the mine are terrifying. Being in these mines in this book was so scary. <laughs> there are also really good ghost elements in here um, and then the ending of this is absolutely fantastic. This is also told in a multimedia format and so interspliced in between the regular chapters are these little clips from unseen footage from all these like ghost hunter shows about the town and it makes it a really really fun read. And then the last book that I have in the YA category is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This is another one that legitimately creeped me out. This book takes place at this like manor right off of the sea and so it has like coastal vibes and it's really dark and dreary. You're following a heroine who is one of 12 daughters and her sisters start dying off and so you open up with her at a funeral mourning the loss of her latest sister and the family has kind of been in mourning for an extensive period of time after the loss of their mother and then a couple of the sisters and so when their father is remarried and the new bride decides that it is time for them to stop mourning and they are going to get rid of all of the black clothes and the drapes off the windows and they are going to start living their life again. But during that time, some dark, creepy things start to happen. The youngest sister starts to see ghosts. They start attending these parties that are slightly mysterious. This ending killed me. The ending of this book just took me for a ride. It is, gets really dark and really creepy. The um, ghosty elements in here are really scary as well. There's something about a little kid seeing a ghost that nobody else can see that is just absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Next section I have is like speculative horror and the first one that I have is Bunny by Mona Awad. This is definitely a polarizing book. In fact, all of the books in this category are super polarizing. You are either love it or hate it. I really loved this book. I think I gave it four stars if I'm remembering correctly. I listened to this on audio and I really recommend the audiobook. The narrator does such a good job for the voices, especially since there's kind of like a hive mind aspect to this. And she just, oh, she killed it with bringing the story to life. This story takes place at a university and you're following a girl who is part of an MFA program. And she is in this program with these four other girls called the Bunnies. And she is simultaneously disgusted by them, but also kind of obsessed with the Bunnies. And the Bunnies seem to have this sort of like unbelievable bond and almost like a hive mind. And as she kind of gets drawn further and further into this group, she becomes one of the Bunnies and you kind of watch all of this creepy stuff unfold. There are, if you like hard magic and rules and explanations, this isn't, this isn't going to work for you because this book is totally unexplained. It, you are just kind of following her down this rabbit hole, pun intended, as she unravels while being part of this creepy group called The Bunnies. And the ending will leave you totally unsatisfied and totally confused, but the ride is so amazing. The next one I have is in a very similar vein to Bunny, and that is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. People are going to hate me for putting this one out of recommendations video because I know people have strong negative feelings about this one. This has the one of the lowest ratings on Goodreads I have ever seen, and it's unfortunate because this book, this book is really creepy. This, just like Bunny, doesn't have a plot that I can tell you about. This book has no plot. Like they're just, there's none in here. It's it's only, I don't know, 300 and some pages. Yeah, a little over 300 pages. None of it is plot. So if you're a plot driven reader, skip, skip over this recommendation. But this takes place at another academy called Catherine House. And while you're there, you are required to spend three years locked inside Catherine House and you are not allowed to go out or communicate with anyone. But supposedly you have the best education possible to you and everyone who graduates here goes on to be outstanding. So we're following a heroine who attends Catherine House, but our heroine is kind of a disaster. She doesn't know why she was accepted to Catherine House. She doesn't really want to be at Catherine House, but you get the impression that she needs to be there, that she's kind of running from something and she just kind of wants a place to hide out for a while. 
But while she's at Catherine House, she starts realizing that it might not be everything that it seems. And there might be some more sinister things going on. And this is essentially like reading somebody's description of a fever dream. You have no idea what's going on. Nobody's likable. <laughs> Nobody really seems to be doing anything for any reason other than they're they're just they're just doing these things. Like there's no there's no reasoning behind their actions. But like as you are reading it, the entire story is so unsettling. You have no idea if anything is real. Why are they doing these things? What's what's really happening? And it gets stranger and stranger until the very end and then it ends. I listened to this on audio just like I did Bunny and it was one of those books that you're listening to and you, like I kept finding myself like stopping what I was doing and just standing there and just being like what's happening. So I recommend this on audio as well if you're an audiobook listener. And then the last book in the speculative genre is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Again this is a super polarizing one. This is either a Neil Gaiman that you absolutely hate or love and I love this. I think I, I listened to this on audio as well. I think I gave it four and a half stars. This is super short. This is one of the special editions. It's less than 200 pages long and you are following a man who returns to his hometown and while he is there he starts remembering his childhood and so he drives to his childhood home and he has this memory of there being a house at the end of the lane and a lake in front of that house and so he walks down the lane and he finds a bench next to the lake and he starts remembering back on his childhood and this book has terrifying monsters it has witches it has a twisty ending. It's just, this book is super atmospheric. It's super creepy. It reads like a middle grade, but dialed up to 11 and definitely for adults because while he's remembering, like you are flashing back into his childhood, he is a young kid. Um, and something about that makes it even scarier because everything that he's experiencing is through the eyes of this like eight or nine year old. And it's just, this book creeped me out highly recommend. Oh, and if you listen to the audiobook, Neil Gaiman actually narrates it himself, and he is a fantastic narrator. I'm going to throw in my one random recommendation here since this is a good transition, and I have one dark romance to recommend, and that is Born Darkly by Trisha Wolf. I wasn't sure if I wanted to include this one in this video or if I wanted to include it in my next, like, not-so-spooky recommendation, but since this is such a dark romance, I decided that it was better to put here so this is a romance between a psychiatrist and a serial killer, and you are following this psychiatrist who is tasked with trying to understand and rehabilitate a serial killer, but while she is working with this serial killer, they start to kind of develop this weird relationship, and she is both completely disgusted and turned off by him while also being attracted to him. And she starts to question herself as well as like what is good. This kind of has this turning point part way through where it turns into a bit of a slasher. So if you are really into dark romance or into like romantic slasher movies, give this one a try. I've only read book one so far. I plan to read book two this spooky season. Definitely check this one out if you want some like really dark creepy romance. The next section I have, I have two paranormal recommendations and the first one I've talked about in a couple of videos already but that is Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. This is pitched as a dark academic story with ghosts. This takes place in Tennessee and you're following this main character who is all set to move down to Tennessee to be with his best friend when he learns that his best friend has died. Everyone believes that his friend died from suicide. He is determined to use his time down in Tennessee to uncover what led to his friend's death. He also inherits not only his friend's fortune as well as his house and his roommates as well as a major and a bunch of secrets that he didn't know his best friend was keeping. And they're all along the way he is being haunted by his best friend's ghost. This is not your like fun haunting. This is a very scary, deadly haunting. I really, really loved this book. The writing is absolutely stunning. The atmosphere of this was fantastic. I loved all of the themes in here. This does explore sexuality as an adult, which I really appreciated. As you're following your hero, he is slowly questioning his sexuality and kind of coming to terms with who he is. And I really liked seeing that in an adult novel. This has huge trigger warnings. I will link my review down below because this covers a lot of things from 
suicide to addiction to all things in between. So I will leave my review down below if you want to check out the content warnings for this one. But if you like dark southern gothic horror, definitely give us one a try. The last paranormal book I want to recommend is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This was one of my favorite books of last year. I absolutely love this dark witchy story. You are following a heroine who lives in this um, puritanical like society, but she has always kind of been on the outside, not only because she is biracial, but because her mother went against um, kind of the society. She was set to marry the prophet who is the head of the society, but instead she had a child with an outsider. And so now our heroine is kind of like seen as less than, and she's just kind of get by and fit in and like go along with everything so that she isn't shunned. And the society that she lives in is kind of on the edge of this forest. And the forest is said to be haunted by these evil witches. And our heroine accidentally finds herself inside the forest and she meets the witches and she's kind of pulled down this path where she starts discovering how she and her family are connected to these witches. These witches are absolutely terrifying. <laughs> these, again, are not your, like, cute, fun witches. They are out to kill you. If you like really atmospheric feminist horror, definitely give this one a read. It's not super, like, fast-paced or anything, but you really delve into, like, the creepiness of these types of societies. And so even though there's not necessarily a ton of horror elements until the very end, the creepiness of the society feels very horrific. Then the last three books that I have are all like thriller horrors. And the first one is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This is another super polarizing book. This is one you either absolutely love or absolutely hate. The one thing I will say about this book to kind of give you an idea if you're going to be on the love it or hate it side, if you need your books to have very clear and concise endings, this isn't, this is not going to work for you by any means. Just skip right over this recommendation. But if you like an open ending that leaves you thinking, definitely give this one a read. It takes place in a cabin. You are following this family. It is this girl and her two dads and they are staying at this cabin in the woods and they are approached one day by this group of strangers and the strangers tell them that the world is ending and that the only way that they can save the world is by following their instructions. I don't want to say any more. I almost, I almost spoiled something in there. But this entire plot kind of revolves around this group of people who say that the world is ending. And you're watching the family kind of grapple with this. It is really gory and really scary. <laughs> and so if you don't like blood or anything like that, don't, don't read this. There are some graphic depictions of people being killed and injured so tread with caution with this one. But I loved this book. I have never been so terrified while reading as while reading this book. I was so scared. The next one I have is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This is not, I don't think this is Simone St. James's like most famous book by any means, but this is my personal favorite thriller of hers. It's a dual timeline story. And so in one timeline, you are in the past and you are at this all girls boarding school and you are following this group of girls who attend this boarding school and this boarding school is haunted. And this group of girls is very close knit and they are trying to survive this school that is not only haunted, but is kind of like not there to support them. And one of the girls from their group suddenly goes missing and they are determined to figure out what happened to her, even though nobody is willing to help. And then in the today timeline, you are following this girl who is, I believe she's a journalist. And years ago, her sister was killed at this boarding school and believes somebody was convicted, but she doesn't believe that he was the actual killer. And so she is kind of grappling with not only the grief of losing her sister, but she also wants to uncover what really happened and why it happened. And those two timelines kind of eventually merged together. And I loved the story. I loved the horror elements, like the ghosty paranormal elements. I did not, I did not see the ending coming at all. This is a really, really well done mystery. I liked that both sides had their own mystery that eventually came together. And then there was like an overarching, it was just, it was beautifully plotted. Simone St. James has amazing writing. 
So definitely recommend this one, especially if you loved um, her other books and you haven't picked this one up yet, definitely give this one a read. And then the last book is no surprise. I guess this is on all kinds of recommendation lists, and that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is a story that takes place in a supposedly haunted house, and you are following this family who lived in this house for, I think it was, what, 10 days? 20 days. They spent 20 days in this house, and in the middle of the night, they flee the house, because it is supposedly haunted and the girl grows up thinking that this house is haunted and she hates the fact that their family is famous for this haunted house because her family became famous off of this haunted house and so she is always connected back to this and she desperately wants to be like separated from this house but when her i think her father passes away she is left to the house in the will and she didn't know that her family still owned the house and so now she decides that she is going to go back to the house and flip it and sell it and be done and then while she is there she starts realizing the house actually might be haunted i love the way that this is written in between the chapters there are little um like clips from the book that her father wrote about their time in this haunted house and along the way you are just kind of discovering like is the house haunted or what is going on and i love that premise i love when i'm reading a book and i don't know if it is paranormal or real riley sager killed it with this one so if you like haunted house stories just like a classic good haunted house story pick this one up for the month of october okay so that is it for my spooky book recommendations let me know if you have read any of these or if any of these are on your october tbr and let me know if you have any other spooky book recommendations that kind of like fit this vibe won't keep me up for the next i don't know three weeks <laughs> sleeping with the lights on so i will catch you all in my next video for some not so spooky recommendations bye